Tonight, I'm going to talk to you about the hindrances to prayer. So another subject on prayer, but I believe that if I don't talk about this subject, then uh, you're not going to get a powerful prayer life. This should definitely be included in my prayer list, uh, prayer playlist. <laughs> I'm going to show you seven hindrances to prayer. Most of it you can find in what I recommended to you from Dr. Ruckman's DVD. But I'm going to give you my own spin on it, okay? And there could be something different as well. Let's look at Psalms chapter 66. Psalms chapter 66. The first hindrance to your prayer life that you have to watch out for is your sin. Is your sin. When you sin against the Lord, then He's not going to hear you. So that's why it is very important that you confess that sin to the Lord first before you pray. And then have Him wash it away with His blood. Psalms chapter 66, and the wind just got rid of my page over here. Let me go back. Verse 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the what? The Lord will not hear me. See? So that hinders God from hearing you when you speak to Him is because of your sin. All right, the next one is James chapter 3. Go to the book of James. We're going to look at the book of James. Thank you, brother. All right, we're going to go to the book of James. Chapter 3. Another thing that you got to watch out for is very simple. It's uh, the reason why God is not answering your prayer is because you didn't even ask Him to begin with. So this can include prayerlessness, or this can include where you're not specifically asking Him for something. Now, I know that's a given, but sometimes you got to realize just asking the Lord, Lord, please make life better for me. That's, uh, that's not going to make God answer your prayer when you have health issues, financial issues, uh, disruption in the family. You have to specifically ask him what that problem is. You can't say, Lord, you know, uh, Lord, you know all my heart and you know what makes me happy. So I pray it all in Jesus name. Amen. See, you have to ask him. God's like, OK, no, tell me. Oh, God, you know, and God's like, I know, but you don't know. So you need to tell me because you don't know the things that make you happy, actually. So when you pray more specifically, you actually start to change your mind sometimes. And you choose words more carefully when you pray. I realize that. So you have to be very specific in your prayer. So it's just asking. Look at verse 2. Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not. Because what? Ye ask not. See? So because you don't ask. The Bible says ask not, so to speak. All right, number three is because you pray something that consumes it upon your lust, actually. So in other words, when you're praying that prayer, Lord, uh, I want a mansion for myself, you got to realize this. Are you, you praying that way to consume it upon your lust? That's something you got to pray about. Now, I know that uh, sometimes people might be overcritical and they might be thinking, you know, when I'm praying to God for uh, a spouse to marry, that sounds like something that I would pray according to my lust. Well, the thing is this, what helps uh, keep a measuring, measuring stick on it is that what, does it glorify God? Is it used more to glorify God or glorify your flesh? That's how you know. That's how you know. And you got to understand this a lot. God, he does want to make you happy. You got to understand. God is not the type of God where uh, he wants you to be miserable. He wants you to be happy. Amen. So you have to think of it in a way that the happiness lies accordingly that will glorify him, that gives him glory. And it's not solely for your selfishness, especially when it leads you to sin. If it leads you to sin, then that's why God's not going to answer it because of the lust. So look at the book of James chapter 4 and verse 3. Ye ask and receive not. So even though you ask, you don't receive it. Why? That ye may consume it upon your lust. How about that? Because of lust. All right. Uh, let's also turn to the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter. The ladies are going to love this part. All right. Let's look at the book of 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. Another reason why God does not answer your prayers 
is because based upon the fact husbands, yes, husbands, all right, I'm talking to you, not the wives, based on the fact husbands that uh, you're mistreating your wife. When you don't treat her well, when you don't uh, honor the wife as much as you should, then what happens is your prayer is hindered. Didn't you know that? Th that's scary right there. All right, so 1 Peter, look at chapter 3. The Bible says over here, at verse 7, Likewise, ye husband, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life. The wife's supposed to submit to me, obey me, etc. Okay, you can quote scripture on that one, but you neglect giving honor. Giving honor. And if, it, if, you, if you lack honor toward her, look at this, and as being heirs together of the grace of life. Look at that. You're not ruler over everything. You notice that? You're heirs together of God's grace that he's given to you both. That's why you got to keep in mind that your what? Prayers be not hindered. How about that? So it is true that the man of the house, that he is the head of the house, and that the wife is supposed to obey the husband, but it's not where you abuse the power. That's the thing. There is no abuse of power over there. All right, uh, the fifth one that we're going to be looking at is James chapter 1. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. All right. The fifth hindrance uh, toward answers prayer is because of double-mindedness. Double-mindedness. You have to make up your mind, actually. All right, look at the book of James, chapter 1. The Word of God says at verse 6, But let him what? Ask in faith. So when you ask something of God at verse 5, see prayer? Let him ask in faith, verse 6, nothing wavering. See, you, you can't waver in it. You got to believe. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall what? Receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. See that? You have to believe. If you don't believe... Um, the power of prayer or that God's going to answer it, then you know what? The Lord's not going to answer it. Every time we pray, we believe. We believe he has the power. Look, I believe that uh, the Lord, he has the power to remove a mountain. I believe that if I were to pray that. All right, go to Mark 11. Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. Now this one you want to know, church, okay? If you don't have this solved, then I don't care how hard you pray, the Lord's not going to answer. If you have something unresolved with a brother or sister in Christ, then the Lord's not going to answer your prayer. No matter how faithful you are in your deed and service to the church, and uh, no matter how much you pray like a prayer warrior, God's not going to answer it. It is important that you have to resolve the issue that you have with your brother or sister in Christ. If you don't resolve this issue, then the Lord, He is not going to answer your prayer. All right, Mark chapter 11. Look at verse 25. And when he stand praying, what? Forgive, if he have aught against any. See that? You have to do that with the brethren. That your Father also which is in heaven may what? Forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Remember, if the sin is not forgiven, then what happens at point number one? He doesn't hear. So uh, some unresolved spirit that you have toward a brother and sister in Christ, you better solve that or God's not going to answer your prayer. So do you think this pastor takes it seriously? Yeah, if, uh, if I, I shouldn't have a bitter spirit toward my members, especially if they may not attend church or if they're not that spiritual or help out or grow the church, I shouldn't have that. Why? Because then God's not going to answer my prayer of growing the church. All right. Number seven. All right. So I forgive all of you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're probably saying... No, I forgive you. you know? So 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. 
You know one thing I learned as a Bible-believing pastor? That uh, it's not just the member, it's also the pastor himself too that is imperfect. And the more that I discover my imperfections, the easier it is for me to forgive a person of imperfections. Let that be a lesson to you. The reason why you find it hard to forgive a person is you're only looking at that person's imperfection versus your perfection. See that? Especially in an argument moment. That's very important to understand, especially in an argument moment. So your wives and husbands may hate this, and siblings out there may hate this, and this includes brothers and sisters in Christ. But yeah, when there's an argument, the most important thing that will help you immensely to make forward in a conversation is don't look at your perfection and that person's imperfection. You got to look at your imperfection. And it becomes more forgiving, actually. All right. Look at 1 John chapter 5. Now, I believe that uh, this is most important over here. Verse 14, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that, we, that if we ask anything according to his will, he what? Heareth. Heareth us. The most important thing that I believe that will be a hindrance to prayer is that you don't pray it accordingly to God's will. According to God's will. That is the ultimate importance where God will hear your prayers. That's the bottom line pretty much of everything. You know that? Look, the bottom line is this. If you lived according to God's will, then don't you think that pretty much that all these prayer requests would be answered pretty much? So the thing is this, is that you've got to realize that when you pray to the Lord, it's so important that when you pray to the Lord, a lot of times you'll hear me pray this, is that, uh, that I pray... That, Lord, we surrender it according to not my will, but thine will be done, as Jesus prayed at the Garden of Gethsemane. When you pray it that way, then it becomes very powerful. Now, I know the concern is, I don't know if my prayer is in God's will, right? Maybe it's a little selfish, maybe it's unselfish, but it's not God's will. But the point is this, whatever you pray, and you have a sincere heart that, Lord, this is my prayer, and yes, I surrender it according to your will. That's it, because if you surrender it according to his will, whatever request you have, then his will could be no, yes, or wait. See that? And his will is always best. Thank God that his will is no, or when his will is yes, or when his will is wait, because nothing is better than God's will in prayer. So see, just pray it to the Lord, but make sure that you end it with according to His will or you think about His will at the very least. You think about and contemplate His will because when you do that, that's why it makes sense. Verse 14 says, and this is the what? Confidence. You have confidence in prayer. One thing I learned too many times is I have confidence. Man, when you have confidence in prayer, it's confidence throughout everything in life, especially during these crazy times of COVID-19, churches unable to run, and members spiritually struggling, and my own personal family life is struggling, and only the people here would know about those personal stuff. So see that? Because of that, why am I able to live in power, peace, and confidence, and still laugh and enjoy fellowship with the brethren here without much fear? And we're in one of the worst counties in America, right? So then why is that? It's because we just have to contemplate according to His will. When you live your life accordingly to His will, you don't really worry about what happens. All right, I hope that this lesson has been very helpful to you. And you can have peace, confidence in your prayer life. Confidence in your prayer life that however way God answers, it's going to be the best.